Hey, are you a beginner looking to start recording your voice or vocals inside of Logic Pro 10? Well, stick around because in this short tutorial, I'll break down everything you need to know so you can start recording your voice. Hi, I'm Reagan Ram with Orpheus Audio Academy, and here we are inside of Logic. I just have this little project here. And so to get started here, we're going to hit the plus button up here and we are going to choose an audio track. And then here we select our audio input. And this is what can trip you up. This is what can trip a lot of beginners up is not selecting the correct input because these correspond to the inputs on your interface, right? So uh, if you're just using a USB mic, um, then you can just select the USB mic from here. If you're using an interface, then you wanna select which input your microphone is plugged into. So. Uh, I have an iRig Pro Duo interface, which has uh, two inputs. And so my microphone is currently plugged into input number one. So I will select that and then we will click create. All right, so we have our track set up. We have our correct input selected. Now it's also very important to turn up the gain on our interface. So you might have some kind of knob on your interface. Um, here's what it looks like on mine. And so I would just want to make sure that this is turned up uh, and that it is actually getting gain, getting uh, some volume here so that we can actually hear our microphone when we are recording. So this is another just simple thing that you might forget is just to have the gain turned up on your interface. And so we can see here in our meter how much gain we're getting. So we're getting a good range here. You want to kind of be in the 24 to 12 range here uh, on your meter. You don't really want to go below 24 because then you're going to reduce the resolution of your audio. And if you start to go higher than 12, a little too loud, then you can run into some clipping and distortion problems. So somewhere between 24 and 12 is a pretty good range uh, for your vo voice to be, your vocal to be. Um, if that seems too quiet, you can always, right? We have things we can do to turn it up with um, gain plugins and so on. So you can always turn it up after the fact, but you don't want it to be clipping and cutting off your audio. So to make sure you're in the proper range, just practice singing at like the loudest uh, that you would be singing at in your song and just make sure it's in the proper range here. Now, if you, I'm currently using a dynamic microphone, so I don't have to worry about this, but if you are using a condenser microphone for recording your vocals, you're also gonna need to turn on phantom power to actually hear your microphone. So your interface will probably have a little switch. Here's what it looks like on my interface, the phantom power switch. And I can just switch that on here and then your microphone will become audible. And then you also over here uh, on the inspector window here, you can click I, if we turn it off, it goes away. We click I here, this is called the inspector. We can see some more information about our track here. And so we're already seeing some audio here because I'm currently recording through input one for this video. And then here we can see where the input is selected. We can change it here to input two if we wanted to. And then this little circle here is important too. So if we click that now it is stereo and you'll only hear the voice coming through uh, either the left or the right side here. You can see it's just left. Uh, we don't want that. So we'll make sure we want to record mono. Um, so we hear it equally on both the left and the right uh, side of the stereo spectrum. And so now we're pretty much ready to record. We then just have to click uh, the R button here on our audio track here to arm the recording. So now it is ready to record. Now it's also very important to hear yourself when you are recording so you can uh, monitor what you're doing. You can know how to sing. And so you can hit the input monitoring here, which is the I here. And now I'm hearing myself and this will let you record now and hear yourself while you are recording. I'm going to just turn this off now so I'm not throwing myself off. Um, some other issues you might run into is some latency while you are recording. So you're recording um, and you have the input monitoring on, but it sounds delayed. It's not actually in time with what you are recording. Um, so some things you can do here is you can go up to preferences and audio and you can reduce your buffer size. So right now my buffer size is at 1024 and that's great for mixing because it uses more uh, of the computer's processing power but it result it results in latency. So for recording, maybe I would drop this down to 256 or 128. So we can try applying this. So if we hear the input monitoring on now, it sounds a little better. Um, I also got this Telestream audio capture I'm using to actually record my screen, and that's introducing some latency here. And so we can see the resulting latency is about 90. So maybe I would reduce this. 
But you can get an idea here. Another thing you can do is you go up to record and do low latency monitoring mode. And so this will all, all of a sudden automatically put you into low latency monitoring mode. So you don't have to worry about any latency while you are recording. All right, with all that set up, now I can just hit record. I'm just gonna mute all these tracks. You can hear, make sure our, our re record button is turned on. It's blinking here. And I can just hit the big red circle at the top. And now the microphone is recording. You can see it to the little one, two, three, four kind of intro with the tempo of the song. So it's kind of a nice lead in. So you kind of feel what the beat is and you know when to start singing. If you want to turn that off, it's just this purple button here. It says count in. So you can turn that off if you don't want to have that lead in. I like having it on. And now we are recording. You can also record with the metronome on if you want. So that kind of helps you know what the tempo of your song is and you can stay in time with what you are recording. All right, so we just recorded one track here. If we want to just quickly pull up another audio track to record on, we make sure we have our audio track selected here. And then we hit this little button up here, which is new track with duplicate settings. So we just click that. Boom, we have that new track again, ready to record if we want to record another take. And I've also got this cycle tool on. So if I have this on, then once it finishes recording, it will immediately cycle back to the beginning. If I just want to keep going on and on and record without recording over what I just did, then I would want to turn cycle off. Now, it won't actually record over what I just recorded. So for example, if this is my cycle range and I were to record right now, so it's leading in, boom, I'm recording now and it can actually loop multiple takes. See, now I'm recording again, and it looks like it's deleting over, it's recording over what I just recorded. But as you can see, it is actually creating multiple takes. So this is really great if you're in the middle of singing a verse section of your song or a chorus section, and you just wanna get multiple takes of it without having to stop your recording and then hitting record again. You can just create multiple takes just like this over and over again, and then we can hit stop. Now we have all these different takes. So we have all these different takes now and we can choose whichever one is our favorite. Or we can cut them up and make a different combination of these different takes. But that's kind of a separate video that's getting into editing and vocal comping. Now, speaking of editing and mixing, if you want a complete proven step-by-step -step system for mixing and mastering your songs from home so you can create radio-worthy songs in record time, you can just grab my free guide in the description below. This is a checklist that you can have with you as you're mixing and mastering so you always know what to do next in the process. Now, there's a whole lot more that goes into recording professional vocals from home than just having your settings right inside of Logic or your DAW or having your settings right on your interface. Your room is also important, how you're singing, where you're singing in regards to the microphone. There's a bunch of other factors that are involved that you might not be considering. And so if you wanna know how to record pro level vocals from home, then just check out my video up here, which walks you through nine simple steps you can follow to make sure you're getting the best possible recordings from home. All right, have a great day and keep creating.